Hey everyone, welcome back. Previously, I have explained the basics of web sockets and how they enable real-time two-way communication between browsers and servers. But many of you wanted more. So today, we'll dive deeper and explore advanced web socket functionalities and how to build powerful real-time applications with them. We'll first revisit the web socket handshake, which is a crucial step where the client and server negotiate the upgrade from HTTP to a web socket connection. We'll then break down the handshake process in detail, exploring the headers exchanged and the steps involved on both sides. So let's dive in and get started. Previously in my WebSocket introduction video, we learned that HTTP uses distinct connection for separate requests. It increases the load on the server as the server has to create a new handshake for every request. Once a request is completed, connection is closed. On the other hand, WebSocket connection is persistent as long as it is not interrupted by either of the parties. The WebSocket protocol is an independent TCP-based protocol. Its only relationship to HTTP is that its handshake is interpreted by HTTP servers as an upgrade request. The WebSocket handshake process is a crucial step that establishes a real-time communication channel between a client, which is browser, and a server. It leverages the familiar HTTP protocol for initial connection but then negotiates an upgrade to the WebSocket protocol. Here is a detailed breakdown of the client and server steps involved. The client opens a regular HTTP connection to the server, specifying a desired WebSocket endpoint in the URL, usually prefixed with WS or WSS for a secure connections. It sends an HTTP GET request with the specific headers to indicate the intention to upgrade to WebSocket. Now the client side headers look like this, wherein the upgrade WebSocket header tells the server that the client wants to upgrade the connection to WebSocket. The connection upgrade header informs the server that the client desires an upgrade from the current connection protocol. The sec WebSocket key is the header that contains a randomly generated base64 encoding string unique to this handshake. It will be used by the server to verify the handshake later. And then there are some additional headers depending on the server implementation and desired features. The additional headers like sec WebSocket version specifying the WebSocket protocol version or sec WebSocket protocol requesting a specific sub protocol which might be included. And then the client waits for the server's response to the HTTP upgrade request. On the other end, when the server receives HTTP GET request from the client, it checks the request headers to ensure that they are valid for a WebSocket handshake and sends an HTTP response with a status code of 101 switching protocols to indicate successful upgrade to WebSocket. The handshake from server looks like this. Let's go through these steps in detail. The server first verifies the presence of upgrade WebSocket and connection upgrade headers. Now the primary goal of the server processing and generating the sec WebSocket accept header is to prove to the client that the server recognized it as a valid WebSocket handshake initiation and is willing to proceed. And the server can confirm that the handshake request originated from a genuine web client and not a malicious actor attempting to impersonate a WebSocket connection. The server receives the base64 encoded string from the sec WebSocket key header. The server then generates a new string by concatenating the received sec WebSocket key with a predefined UID, for example this. And then applying a cryptographic hash function such as SHA1, and this new string is then base64 encoded. The server sends an HTTP response with a status code of 101 switching protocols to indicate successful upgrade to WebSocket. The response includes the following headers. An upgrade WebSocket header echoing back the upgrade request from the client. Connection upgrade confirming the upgrade from HTTP to WebSocket. And sec WebSocket accept, this is the base64 encoded string generated previously. And this verifies that the client initiated the handshake. Once the client receives the server's response with the correct sec WebSocket accept header, it validates the response confirming a successful handshake. Both client and server can now start exchanging data using the WebSocket protocol over the established TCP connection. The HTTP connection is essentially replaced by the WebSocket connection. Now, if the sec WebSocket accept value does not match the expected value, or if the header field is missing, or if the HTTP status code is not 101, the connection will not be established and WebSocket frames will not be sent. If any code other than 101 is returned from the server, clients have to end the connection. The WebSocket handshake ensures a secure and authenticated connection by including a random key, sec WebSocket key, generated by the client and verified by the server through sec WebSocket accept header. 
This handshake process paves the way for real-time two-way communication between the client and server without the need for a constant HTTP request and responses. WebSocket has a default URA format such as below. Like I said before, it can be either WS or WSS. And just like HTTP protocol, the port component is optional as default port 80 is used for WS and 443 is used for WSS. WSS is used as a secure URI or as a secure flag is set and TLS handshake is done between server and client for secure communication. In WebSocket protocol, data is transmitted using sequence of frames. Frames in WebSocket are the basic units of the data that are exchanged between the client and server. And each frame has a specific structure. FIN or FIN indicates whether the frame is in the final fragment or larger message. A value of 1 means it's the final fragment. And while 0 means there are more fragments to come. More on fragments later. RSV1, RSV2, RSV3, these three bits are the reserved bits. They are typically set to 0 and they are currently reserved for future use case or potential extensions to the WebSocket protocol. The opcode fields defines the type of data the frame carries. It could be a textual data in UTF-8 encoded format or a binary data or a ping frame for keep alive events. The mask bit indicates if the payload data is masked. Masking is always applied to frames sent from client to server. We'll take a closer look at masking shortly. The payload length defines the length of the payload data and the length field itself can vary from 0 to 125 depending on the size of the payload. The masking key is used to obscure payload data. And the payload data, which is of variable length, has the actual content of the messages such as text or binary data. Now, coming back to masking, masking's main goal in WebSocket is to ensure smooth transition of real-time data through various network infrastructure that wasn't necessarily designed with WebSockets in mind. Before WebSockets were standardized, some network infrastructure component, particularly those designed purely for HTTP traffic, tried to be smart when it came to caching. These caching proxies sometimes stored responses from a server expecting that they can later reuse the same response for similar HTTP request. However, WebSocket connections don't follow the traditional HTTP request response pattern. Unmasked WebSocket data could be wrongly interpreted as HTTP content and can be stored potentially leading to issues later when a real HTTP request is made. Masking obscures the data within WebSocket frames in a way that makes it unpredictable and very unlikely to resemble valid HTTP requests or responses. This discourages proxies and other intermediaries from attempting to cache or modify the data, as it clearly doesn't fit the HTTP model. Masking basically makes WebSocket traffic look distinctly different from HTTP, discouraging incorrect interpretation or manipulation. Fragmentation on the other hand in WebSockets refers to the process of splitting a large message into smaller chunks for transmission over the network. This technique is particularly useful for handling a very large messages that might overwhelm the connection or exceed buffer limitations on either the client or server. It is to prevent buffer overflow. Imagine a user uploading a large file through a WebSocket connection and without fragmentation, the entire file would be sent as a single message. This could potentially overflow buffers on the client or server, leading to connection errors or performance issues. Fragmentation allows for gradual delivery of large messages. The receiver can start processing the initial fragments while the remaining fragments are still being transmitted. This can be beneficial for applications where immediate display of partial data is valuable, such as receiving updates during a long running process. Now, when a message is split up into fragments, each fragment is sent with a fin bit set to zero for all but the final frame in the sequence. The FIN bit indicates whether the current frame is the final frame in the message or whether more frames will follow. If the fin bit is set to zero, it means that there are more frames coming and the receiver should continue to wait for additional frames before processing the message. And when the final fragment of the message is sent, it is sent with the fin bit set to one. This signals to the receiver that this is the last frame in the message. Now, WebSockets are a versatile communication technology and find applications in various domains. For example, in chat applications for sending and receiving messages quickly and efficiently, which I have in fact previously covered in my WhatsApp system design video. It can also enable real-time communication in web application, such as changes and updates on the web pages. In gaming industry, it can facilitate seamless multiplayer gaming experiences. Or imagine a real-time drawing app where multiple users can collaborate on a canvas. Or maybe in stock exchanges, 
for real-time updates on stock ticker prices. These advanced WebSocket concepts might seem complex, but the possibilities they unlock are worth the effort. Remember, breaking things down, experimenting and understanding the why behind each feature will lead to true mastery. So if you have any questions or cool project ideas, drop them in the comments and let's keep the Bytemark community growing.